Usually it's ladies first, but today it's the lady goes last, and that's because she just got here from another event, another rally in Portland. But our final speaker today is Betsy Sweet, political activist. Yes, we all know Betsy. She's a graduate of Colgate University and earned her master's degree at University of Santa Monica, a political activist, a former candidate for governor, and now a candidate for the U.S. Senate in 2020. <laughs> Betsy Sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for being here on this gorgeous day. Um, you're all smart to find a little shade. Thank you for indulging me. I would have marched with you, but I was gaily marching down in Portland, and now I'm here to sing the healthcare blues with you. <laughs> so, and you know, I was thinking about it, and the health healthcare does give me the blues. Because why on earth is the richest nation in the world, the only nation, industrialized nation in the world that does not provide comprehensive public medical health insurance for their people? What is wrong with us? That is what gives us the blues. Healthcare is a right, not a privilege. And you know, there are 60,000 people in Maine now, even after the Maine Care expansion, who do not have health care. And those of us who have it, how many of you have health insurance? Raise your hand. Okay, so I have health insurance too. And I pay $1,000 a month just for me, because my th kids are in college and one has a job, thank you. Um, so $1,000 a month for me, and my deductible is $6,000 a year. I can't afford that. So I have three procedures that they have told me I should have, not life-threatening, thank you, but I'm not doing them. I don't have that kind of money. So even though I have health insurance, it doesn't mean anything to me. I guess if I had a terrible catastrophe, it might help. But, you know, so why don't we have it? And Bill got there, he got started to talk about it. There was one reason, and it's money. We, what is profit doing in this system? Profit does not belong in the system of taking care of people. And I have to, and you know, I have, I have a counseling business as well as being an advocate in, in the legislature. I have five doctors in my practice right now, five primary care physicians who are coming to see me for the emotional support to get out of being a physician because that they did not go to medical school to become, see people for seven minutes to decide them what pharmaceutical to give them. They want to help people. They want to heal people. And our system is not designed to let them do that. And that is not okay. And so, the money is not just in the healthcare system. You know, people say we don't have healthcare because Maine people don't want it. Well, that's BS, right? Also, my initials BS. I just want to say, um, but that is that we that's BS. Mainers share the value. I have been all over this state, and there is not a single Mainer who believes that if you get sick, you should not be able to go get help from a doctor. Not one single Mainer. So how is it possible that we share those values so intensely and yet we don't have health care? Because the question should not be if, because we share those values. The question, which you folks are all working on, is the how. Okay, so the question is not if, it's how. And the, one of the issues that matters is that the people who don't want us to have health care, who don't want to lose the money in health care, they want us to keep having the conversation of if we should have universal health care. The only question we have to have is how do we get it done? And that is the job of our elected leaders, and that is the job of the people. Because you know what? The change is only going to happen when we demand it. We are part, today is part of us demanding change and not standing for anything else. You know, when women wanted the right to vote, no one was going to give it to us. It only happened because we demanded it. When those of us who were, some of us are here, who are in the civil rights movement, that wasn't given up willingly. That was because we went to the streets and we demanded it. When we, went, when we ended the Vietnam War, that didn't happen because the politicians wanted it. It happened because the people demanded it. So we are at a state now where we need to be, just like we are here today, demanding not half measures, 
not hoping we drift into some kind of solution, but demanding that they listen to the values of Maine people and people all across this country and change our health care system fundamentally so that we have health care as a right and that every man, woman, and child in this country is not afraid of getting sick because it will make them bankrupt, where they can get health. And the other thing, and when we have that system, the great thing is we will really think about health and not about illness. We don't have a health care system, we have an illness system, right? If people, if we could actually remember, I know some of you remember because I see the color of your hair like mine. Remember the Kennedy's fitness plan where we all did jumping jacks in front of the state, on, in front of the, in our classrooms and we marched and stuff. If we all got enough rest, decent, non-GMO, non-pesticide ridden food, and we got enough sleep, and we got exercise, we could eliminate about 30% of the cost of our health care. But we don't do that because it's not their interest, their financial interest is in keeping us sick, not in keeping us well. So it's a totally upside down thing, right? It's totally upside down. But the other thing, it's money, and it's if you want to see the largest corporations and the largest donations to politicians, not just Republicans, but to Republicans and Democrats, it's the banks, and then it's pharmaceutical industries, and then it's the insurance companies. And believe you me, when they give money, they're not doing it because they just want to be nice. They are doing it because they expect a vote in return. And that's why I ran as a clean elections candidate for, the, for governor of the state, and why I, as a Senate candidate for the US Senate, I will not take any corporate PAC money, I will not take any money from lobbyists in DC, I will make sure that the only people that are represented in DC by the US Senator from Maine, by the Senator from Maine, are Maine people and our values. And I think we have got to start telling the truth to the big lies. So the big lies isn't that we can't afford it. We can afford this. We spent over a trillion dollars in the last two years in the Middle East on wars that protect the fossil fuel industry that's killing us. We spent trillions of dollars on a tax cut for the wealthiest corporations and people in this state when that money could be paying twice over for our health care. And we have corporations like Amazon and like General Dynamics who paid exactly zero dollars in taxes and got a tax rebate under this most recent tax scheme from the scam from the governor. I mean from the, sorry, from the president of the United States, right? So that it's not true. So the only way, as I said before, the only way to counter big lies is to tell the big truth. And the big truth is that we want health care. We want it now. We don't want half measures. We can afford it. And we want wellness. And that is our, that's the opportunity that we have, to be in the streets, to be talking, to be knocking on doors, and not be relentless, and not give up. And you know, one of the things that's true about me is that my entire life, I've done things that people said couldn't be done. So when they said, when we passed the first Family Medical Leave Act in the nation, when I was working as an advocate for the Commission for Women, they said, no, no, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. And I said, you want to bet? And we did it. And when we passed the first public finance and clean election system in the country in 1996, when we were horrified that a state Senate race cost $6,000 to run, right? Back in the day, right? We were horrified, Troy, when it was cost $6,000. People said to us, you can't do that. And we said, you want to bet? And so now, today, this day forward, when they say it's not possible to have a single payer healthcare system for all Americans, we are gonna say, you wanna bet? Because we are gonna make this happen. It's gonna take all of us. And I am so grateful to every single one of you for doing the work that you do, do every single day, day in and day out, and for all the work that you do on not the if, but the how, because that's how we're gonna make this happen. Thank you very much, and I look forward to working with you as an advocate, and hopefully as your next US Senator. Thank you very much.
here for a 